Hello everyone. So welcome to uh, Tea with Ravi. So today let us uh, take a look at uh, some of the recent updates from the Atlassian ecosystem. And the first update is actually quite interesting because uh, Atlassian has been uh, focusing on uh, cloud, Jira cloud. And uh, when it comes to customizations, there are of course differences, there are limitations on cloud, but at the same time, it is good to see that uh, Atlassian is uh, trying to add a lot of features and trying to not really uh, check all the boxes, but at the same time, uh, giving us options. Now, there is one specific feature that uh, users are always looking for, and that is basically dynamic forms. Now. Imagine that you are raising a, a request or creating an issue in Jira. It could be any any kind of issue. It could be a story or an, or an epic. It could be a requirement. Or maybe if you're doing something on the customer portal where the user is trying to provide, provide some information. So when you raise an issue in Jira, you fill up a form. And when you fill up a form, you want to capture some details. And uh, you can, of course, make a field mandatory. But at the same time, sometimes you need to capture uh, some fields based on uh, previously selected fields. For example, if the priority or let us say the urgency of uh, a bug or an incident is uh, critical or high, maybe you want to capture some additional information, right? It's a very simple example, but uh, when you have these uh, small dynamic features on your form or basically in the UI, then you can you can ex, you can actually in a way increase or improve the experience uh, and at the same time uh, make the form relevant. Now on Jira Cloud it was never really possible uh, using uh, Forge. I mean Forge is of course new, but uh, in Forge I believe recently or sometime last last year, Atlassian announced this uh, UI modification, and this UI modification. Uh, is something that has been adopted by a few apps that I have tried. And one such, one such app, or I, sh I should talk about one such functionality is basically called as behaviors. I mean, behavior is a feature of Scriptana. And on data center, on-prem version of Jira, behaviors, uh, the way it works, you can actually create dynamic forms. And it is actually quite good because uh, you can you can actually do a lot of wonderful things with it. Of course, you can't really do that easily on Jira Cloud, but Scriptana, they also launched, I believe, a new app, Forge-based app for basically doing the same thing and they call it as behavior. And I know I have seen a couple of other apps that have this, uh, this behavior. <laughs> now, this is good because uh, now we can, uh, and app vendors can, uh, utilize this and they can create uh, dynamic forms. But this UI modification functionality is uh, still a bit limited and it works, on, I, I believe, only on the issue, create, issue creation screen. You know, that pop-up that appears or, you know, the, the screen where you create the issue. But I believe uh, what uh, Atlassian is doing, they are also trying to introduce this to other areas where you interact with your issues. And I can see here on this particular post on the Atlassian, Atlassian developer community, not Atlassian community, Atlassian developer community. Here it says that uh, we, are pleased to, we are pleased to announce EAP, Early Access Program, of a new location support. And that new location is Issue View. So I will try uh, how, how this works. And uh, Forge is something that we are also trying to adopt. We are also trying to use it to not only create apps, but also we are exploring how we can use Forge to provide services around, uh, of course, you know, Jira and uh, other applications that support that are supported by Forge. So this is interesting. And uh, when I have more information on this, I will uh, let you know. At the same time, if you want access or if you want to try it out, you can actually request Atlassian and they will enable, enable it on your uh, Jira instance. So that was uh, quite important. The second update is again, it is 
quite important and this will impact almost everyone who is using Jira. Now in Jira, we have notifications and uh, you can get notified based on uh, different events. And those events are uh, issue creation, issue updation, when you assign something to someone, when you uh, add a comment. So there are different events and you can actually configure these notifications to not only get notifications uh, in the form of an email, but at the same time, you have the option to configure these notifications and define the recipients. So basically, people who will receive an email could be your assignee or reporter, or it could be the project lead or component lead, and it could be a group, uh, user group, it could be a role, it could be watcher or a user picker field or a group pick a field. So you have a lot of options, but there is also one more field, which is single email address. And I believe this is useful, although I never really, uh, I don't really use it a lot. But when you have an issue in Jira, which is public, like let us say your Jira instance is, ex is open to everyone and you, you have like a public uh, issue, I mean, anyone can access it, then I believe you can send an email to someone. So this single email address, what Atlassian is saying is that they are going to remove it. So you won't be able to send or configure no email notifications based on a single email address addresses. And this may not be ideal for a lot of people. But fortunately, there are workarounds. If you're using Jira automation rules, you can always use automation rules to configure these uh, email sending thing, uh, which is good. But at the, at the same time, uh, you can also rely on other other apps and uh, there are all there are always you know possibilities of course in jira you we you we are all aware of webhooks and you can also configure a webhook to do something outside uh, jira basically send something outside jira so this is important this is important because uh, if you have configured some notifications then you need to be aware of it so this is like a really important uh, update from atlassian especially for Jira admins. I guess people who watch my videos, they are mostly Jira admins, uh, if not all. I mean, most of them are trying to do something with Jira and they are administrators. But uh, if you are going to configure uh, notification schemes, don't use single email address because I think after 15th of August this year, 2023, Atlassian will start removing it. And uh, you should be aware of it. The third thing third and fourth thing that i want to talk about today is uh, is related to the upcoming features now i keep an eye and i think you should also do that i keep an eye on the roadmap cloud roadmap especially cloud roadmap so if you go to atlassian.com slash roadmap slash cloud you can actually take a look at uh, the upcoming features and it's a good thing because atlassian has now started doing it they have started uh, uh, talking about what features they're going to release. And uh, I noticed two improvements, upcoming features. The first one that I want to talk about is the admin API for user management. Now user management in Jira, it is, uh, it, it is good, you can do a lot of wonderful things. But I believe what Atlassian will do, you can expect APIs. So basically for managing users or doing user management actions, uh, there will be an endpoint and you can use REST API. And uh, it is not only limited to Jira, but I can see here in the list, Jira, Confluence, Bitbucket, Obstiny, Trello, Status Page, they will all get uh, APIs for, uh, for user management. And I would be more than happy to utilize them. And this will be available, I believe, in quarter four, 2023. So I guess sometime in September, October, I guess, maybe in a few months. So I will definitely uh, uh, keep an eye on this. At the same time, if we take a look at uh, this update, which is about uh, company management uh, projects. Now, when you are so, so the, the update is basically about uh, fields, company managed fields, basically, you know, the usual custom fields that you create in Jira globally, those fields will be, will be available for you to use in your team managed 
service management projects so it is in a way a good thing but i would like to see how this will work in reality i guess it's a good thing because if you have a field in jira then of course you know you should reuse it and i guess uh, when you are working on a team managed projects i think it will probably give the project admins the list of all the fields available and they can pick those fields to be used in their projects and uh, i'm not 100% sure how this will work in reality because if you're doing that then use company managed projects anyways i mean i mean this is just one example and i'm i was never really a fan of company i mean not company team managed projects i think uh, the way jira works the power is of course customizations and of course in a way it lets people it, it let people create some standards but at the same time you have to be careful about these standards and these configurations and when you are dealing with company managed projects or basically normal jira projects you can create these configurations that you can reuse but i guess now when project administrators moving forward if they are able to use the fields from uh, normal like global jira fields i guess in a way it's like a sharing of things between company managed and team managed projects so i'm not i'm not really sure why atlassian is doing it maybe they are trying to merge team managed project configurations with company managed project configurations i, I, I don't know so this feature will be released i believe in q3 so i guess anytime um now and i thought i'll probably uh, let you know I also at the same time this is only applicable to jira service management based projects so i don't know why <laughs> so uh this is something that i believe maybe they will do for gsm and then also for jira software or maybe jira work management let us see the last thing that i want to talk about is uh this video video of the week now i try to share because i i'm a consultant i'm an atlassian consultant my responsibility my job is to make sure that i help people uh get the most out of atlassian tools and that usually involves me talking to people and in this video i i basically shared my experience on uh, basically not being afraid of asking questions now let, let's say you are a consultant or maybe you're thinking of becoming a consultant or maybe you are on a path to become an be, become an atlassian consultant and you have that jira admin skills so you're good in jira you know how jira administration works but to enter this this consultation domain where you will be interacting with the managers maybe ctos program managers so you will be talking to a lot of people and when you have that technical background it might not not be enough because uh, it is not just about jira it is not just about uh, using the tools it is also about processes it is also about people it is also about uh, things like culture so when you are trying to capture requirements or when you are trying to roll out jira or when you are trying to help someone get the most out of atlassian tools you need to ask them a lot of questions and uh, those questions uh, can be uh, i mean you think that, that those questions are stupid or if you are not really sure then don't don't be afraid ask ask a lot of questions ask them what is the meaning of this particular uh, term that you used and you can actually ask them okay you are doing project management what all you do in project management and they will probably say something like okay we do definition tool get we 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 do things like uh, sign off so try to understand what exactly they mean by these things because uh, not everything can be achieved easily in the tool and if you don't really ask them these questions maybe they will assume or maybe they will uh, uh, get some wrong impression because if you ask them these questions uh, and you should ask these questions because you have because you have to translate those configurations or you have to basically define the process in the tool so jira should reflect in a way uh, the way they want to work or they uh, you want uh, to promote those standards and uh, when you ask these questions you should also tell them at least the stakeholders or people who would be involved in uh, jira adoption that uh, you can't really do each and everything and you can't you, you can only te- you can only tell tell them these things uh, after or once you have uh, once you have understood what they are trying to achieve so just a general advice ask a lot of questions and uh, there is no stupid question it will help you if it will help you a lot so you can watch this video 
uh, basically you know i just told you what i also talked about in that particular video but i do make these videos where i just share these experiences and there is a playlist called career advice and i thought i'll probably let you know so that is it for uh, for this week i hope i hope you found this uh, session this uh, tea with uh, ravi session useful and you learned something new today thank you very much bye bye